War of the Roses, a third-person medieval deathmatch by Fat Shark steeped in real history. Chivalry, a first-person medieval combat game by Torn Banner set in a fictional realm. Which is deadliest? To find out, we'll be testing both games in several categories, making exhaustive comparisons and racking up the body count along the way to find out which is the deadliest war. Melee combat in War of the Roses uses a four-directional system. Holding down the mouse button and flicking in a specific direction will cause you to charge up an attack dependent on the direction you chose. These attacks have some minor variants, but tend to boil down to left slash, right slash, overhead, and stab motions. The directional system also applies to blocking, and it is possible to fully parry an attack if you block in the same direction that the attack is coming from. Shields provide a complete block as long as you are facing in the direction of the attacker and are not penetrated by the weapon in question. Melee combat in War of the Roses also features several special attacks, including a push and shield bash dependent on your chosen abilities. War of the Roses suffers from occasionally floaty melee attacks that appear to have very little force behind them. Combat can often devolve into combatants flailing at each other until one of them goes down as opposed to counter and riposte gameplay. While these elements do exist within the game, it does not appear to encourage that behavior a great deal, and blindly swinging can sometimes be more effective since missed swings are rarely punished. War of the Roses also features mounted combat with a first-person lance aiming system, which is extremely satisfying to play. Melee combat in Chivalry uses a three-move system. Holding down the left mouse button will result in a horizontal slash, flicking the mouse wheel downwards will result in a thrust or stabbing motion, and flicking the mouse wheel up will result in an overhead swing. Blocking is not strictly directional, but does involve aiming your crosshair in the vague direction of the incoming attack, otherwise the block will fail. Shields, needless to say, are more effective in this regard. Kicks can also be used to break blocks, and there is a specific button that you can use to feint out of an attack and immediately follow up with another. The game features a combo system where a rapid set of inputs will ensure a smooth series of attacks one after another. The melee system is limited by stamina, which once exhausted must be recharged before you can attack or parry again. Attacks can also be ducked under or jumped over if timed correctly. Attacks have significant weight behind them and missing is severely punished. Significant friendly fire damage also discourages wild horizontal swings. Since you cannot charge your strike and hold a specific stance, timing is extremely important. Both games focus on melee combat, however I feel Chivalry does a better job of putting real weight behind each attack. The combat system initially appears simpler than War of the Roses, but has a great deal of depth and advanced combat techniques. While both games allow you to feint and cancel out of an attack, Chivalry appears to do it significantly better, with a specific key dedicated to the purpose and less reliance on charged up attacks in order to do damage. The lack of a charge up mechanic within Chivalry benefits the melee system because it increases reliance on well-timed attacks, and gives the melee combat a more fluid and natural look. War of the Roses suffers in this regard, with players often seen running around with their weapons held at odd angles, strafing in circles preparing to strike. This contributes greatly to the floaty and non-committal feel of the melee combat. War of the Roses does have mounted combat, which adds another facet to the overall system, and its mechanics are well executed and satisfying. However, for the man on the ground, one game is clearly superior. War of the Roses features a separate system for bows and crossbows. Bows feature a charge system which represents fully drawing the string. The string can then be held at maximum strength for a brief time, after which the attack will become less and less accurate before being cancelled altogether. Careful aim at the target and striking when the charge meter is at maximum is critical to success with the bow. Crossbows do not require this and are always fired at maximum strength. They do, however, have a much lengthier reload time and utilize a reload system in which you can click at the correct time to decrease the reload delay. Failure to do so will extend the reload time, offering a risk-reward choice. Both types of bows feature significant projectile drop which must be compensated for, as well as the ability to briefly hold one's breath in order to steady the player's aim. Ranged weapons allow for exceptional precision up to and including headshots and aiming at the opponent's face through the gap in his visor. Weak points in the armor are also simulated and can and should be targeted for the greatest effect. Chivalry features ranged combat through both bows and crossbows, which operate in a similar fashion, with the crossbow suffering a slower refire rate. The crossbow allows for more precise aim with an aim down sights mode bound to the right mouse button. Both weapons feature fairly large and imprecise crosshairs. Chivalry features a large variety of ranged weapon types, with each class able to equip a thrown weapon of some description. This includes javelins, knives, axes, and firepots. Archers in Chivalry are also able to deploy a large shield on the ground, which they can use to take cover from enemy missile attacks. 
While chivalry has a greater variety of ranged weapons, War of the Roses executes the entire concept better. While melee combat in chivalry has that meaty, decisive feel to it, ranged combat feels almost like an afterthought. Precision is difficult to accomplish in chivalry due to the enlarged crosshairs, and the system has very little depth to it. Playing as an archer in chivalry is, in my opinion, one of the least enjoyable experiences, whereas in War of the Roses it feels fully fleshed out with extremely satisfying shots and impacts. Edge War of the Roses War of the Roses is based on the actual War of the Roses, with weapons and items from that time period. The maps themselves are based on real locations, such as Bambara Castle. War of the Roses also has a number of elements to its combat that are fairly realistic, including very precise locational damage, which takes into account armor on that specific part of the body, as well as the effect of the type of helmet and whether the visor is open or closed. It has a number of different weapon types designed to overcome various types of protection, such as armor-piercing arrows and blunt weapons, as well as different historically accurate weapon materials, bevels and edge grinds. War of the Roses also features bleeding and hamstring mechanics, to account for the fact that battles take their toll on more than just the health bar. Weapons and targets also have accurate hitboxes, which include weapons with a wooden shaft, only doing significant damage if you're able to connect with the actual head of the weapon. The shaft itself can also strike the target with negligible effect, and the distance between the player and the target must be carefully considered, as it would be with a real polearm. Chivalry features varied and realistic objectives rather than merely team deathmatch, giving players a mission and a purpose. Its stamina system accounts for the fact that you cannot just keep swinging without getting tired, and the precision strikes were important in one-on-one -on -one melee combat. The inability to charge up and hold an attack in place provides for a more realistic-looking melee. Both games suffer on the realism standpoint. War of the Roses falls down on execution and the revival system, which allows a player to be repeatedly stabbed over and over again in the face, yet be almost instantly revived as long as the execution animation is not allowed to finish. Its squad-based spawning system has players appearing out of thin air, whereas Chivalry makes an effort to actually hide the spawning locations from view. It's also bested by Chivalry's melee system, taking into account the weight of the weapon and the fact that swinging wildly in full plate with a large heavy weapon will quickly tire out the wielder. Chivalry, however, is set in a fictional world, and while it does use actual melee weapons from the medieval period, it cannot keep up with War of the Roses' authenticity and attention to detail, which even extends as far as to lengthy, historically accurate descriptions of every item and customization in the game. Edge War of the Roses War of the Roses can be pretty brutal at times. It has an execution mechanic, which involves a lethal death blow with very little time for finesse. Executions include multiple stabs to the neck and face, a shield blow to sever the neck, and a sword thrust straight through the victim, which is then twisted while still impaling the poor sword. Executions are seen from a first-person perspective by the victim, which is not exactly pleasant. Solid hits also reward the player with a spray of blood. Chivalry excels in all aspects of brutality. Its first-person nature forces players to get up close and personal with their targets, and the entire game is in your face. Chivalry features the severing of limbs, as well as full decapitations accompanied by blood-curdling screams. Players are also able to set their targets on fire, with accompanying wails of agony from the unfortunate victim. The melee combat system is brutal and to the point. Targets take very few hits to go down, and there is no mercy at any given time. Chivalry doesn't pull punches on the objectives either, which involve burning fields and granaries, poisoning village water supplies, slaughtering entire royal families, and even a level where one of the objectives is to kill the filthy peasants. While War of the Roses presents a bloody war, it also feels sanitized in places. Players can beg for mercy, and this is a key mechanic of the game. Executions may be brutal, but the bodies remain intact, and there is no severing of limbs or the taking of heads. Its third-person combat system and floaty melee also serve to disconnect you from the heat of battle, allowing you to stay aloof from the carnage, failing to fully immerse you in the horrors of medieval warfare. Chivalry gives no quarter at any point. There is no escape from its brutality, your objectives are often bloody, morally ambiguous, or downright evil. Battle cries and blood-curdling screams echo the battlefield, and mangled corpses litter the floor. War of the Roses cannot compete with chivalry when it comes to sheer melee brutality, and quite honestly, I don't think anything can. Edge Chivalry
War of the Roses is an incredible looking game which utilizes the latest lighting effects and post-processing techniques included in the BitSquid engine. The game looks gorgeous, particularly on levels with an evening glow. At points, volleys of flaming arrows are seen in the background, and the game often presents large, sweeping landscapes with finely detailed villages and fortifications. Foliage is also thick and lush, and the game has fairly high texture resolution. It also has a great deal of excellent sound assets. Firing a bow gives a satisfying thunk, as does hitting a target. Weapon impacts ring with loud and clear blows, which also vary depending on the material they're hitting. Menus are well laid out and properly explained, and the whole product oozes polish across the board. Chivalry is a reasonable-looking title that uses the Unreal 3 engine and is a big improvement on the original Age of Chivalry mod for Half-Life 2. It has a gritty, grimy look to it, which is appropriate considering the carnage that the game offers. Animation quality is high, which makes melee combat look particularly good. While War of the Roses is extremely well-polished and graphically superior, it does fall down greatly when compared to Chivalry's animation quality. Good animations are key to any game that involves melee combat of any description, and War of the Roses is found wanting in several areas. Chivalry, on the other hand, does not have the same high-quality assets found in War of the Roses, which, quite frankly, looks gorgeous at times. Texture quality is middling at best across the board, and you will not find the same amount of graphical detail that is present in War of the Roses. When it comes down to engine comparisons, both engines have a couple of interesting issues. The BitSquid engine seems to have rather odd foliage pop-in, which involves foliage springing out of the ground at a certain distance, and the Unreal 3 engine is limited to 90 frames per second in multiplayer, which will be bad news for those who use 120Hz monitors. All engine issues aside, despite its animation weakness, War of the Roses gets an edge in presentation. War of the Roses features a rather in-depth customization system, which includes both cosmetic and loadout choices. War of the Roses has the ability to customize your individual coat of arms, which will appear on some armor pieces and shields, as well as plumage on your helmet. You can also unlock various armor colors to make your soldier look as unique as possible. On the loadout standpoint, the game is extremely in-depth, providing many separate options for each weapon, including ammunition types and reload systems for bows, as well as edge grinds, materials, fighting styles, shafts, pommels, and more for melee weapons. War of the Roses currently features 31 weapons, with 7 more to come in a forthcoming free content update, each of which can be customized to a greater or lesser extent. The game also offers a variety of horses to choose from, each with different characteristics in both unarmored and barded variants. War of the Roses also features a perk system, allowing two perks in five categories to be selected, which directly affects the abilities of your character. Some allow for different weapons to be used, others unlock combat moves, but most simply provide a boost to a particular aspect of your character. The game allows for five different custom loadouts to be unlocked and used at any given time, along with four default classes. Provided you have the correct perks, you can mix and match pretty much any armor, weapon type, and fighting style, with the exception of horse archery, which is not included in the game. Chivalry features a bewildering arsenal, which currently includes 36 primary weapons across four classes, as well as around nine different secondary weapons with class overlap. It also contains a handful of special items such as smoke bombs, fire pots, throwing axes, and knives. Visual customization is limited to a choice of helmet, of which there are currently two in the game, the default and the special Kickstarter reward. Chivalry has four classes, the Archer, Man-at-Arms, Vanguard, and Knight, each of which comes with default characteristics and armor sets which cannot be altered. Players are able to choose a primary weapon, a secondary weapon, and a special item. All primary weapons are class-specific, secondaries have some class overlap, as do specials. Each class will always have a particular special that they can use which no other class has access to. It's clear that while Chivalry has a larger arsenal than War of the Roses, it is defeated in every other aspect of customization. Fat Shark went to great lengths to ensure that you can make your soldier as individual as possible, with the coat of arms system providing a great deal of cosmetic customization. Neither game allows for cosmetic alteration to weapons or your actual character's face, which is quite a disappointment. Chivalry limits your equipment based on your chosen class, which means while all four classes play very differently, you're given only limited tools to customize your character to your liking. Both games utilize a level-based unlock system, though the majority of War of the Roses items and customizations are unlocked via in-game coins you earn by playing, with only a few items level-restricted, whereas Chivalry level restricts the majority of your arsenal from the start, but the items are automatically unlocked for you once you reach that level. It isn't even a contest. War of the Roses gets the edge in customization.
War of the Roses features two multiplayer modes, Team Deathmatch and Conquest, which are fairly self-explanatory. It supports up to 64 players and features seven maps with TDM and Conquest mode available on each one. There are also some unofficial game modes, including Jousting and Duel, which are supported on specific servers using Gentleman's Rules. The game features a squad system as well as various squad leader buffs, which can be activated to give an edge to nearby squad members. Squad coherency is maintained with the squad spawn system, which allows players to spawn on their leader rather than at base camp when appropriate. Chivalry features five multiplayer modes, Team Deathmatch, Team Objective, King of the Hill, Last Team Standing, and Free For All. These modes are fairly map-specific, with some maps being restricted to only certain kinds of play. The game currently features six maps and supports up to 32 players at once. Team Objective has multiple tiered objectives and uses large maps broken up into stages to support it. Once the attacking team has completed an objective, they move on to the next section of the map, at which point they are given a new objective. Some of these objectives involve limited siege warfare with access to ballistas, battering rams and catapults. Some levels also feature a limited amount of destructible terrain, doors can be battered down and wooden fortifications destroyed with catapult fire. Team players required in order to achieve the objectives. In this particular contest, War of the Roses struggles to bring any great depth to the table. The two gameplay modes it does offer are about as generic as you can possibly get, and the bare minimum one would expect from a new multiplayer title. Fatshark have promised more modes, and have already announced that a mode called Pitched Battle will go into beta soon, but as it stands, War of the Roses is found wanting in terms of its multiplayer gameplay variety. Chivalry, on the other hand, while having slightly fewer maps than its opponents, provides the excellent team objective mode, which gives both context and momentum to each battle. Each map plays out very differently, and there is a great deal of variety in terms of objectives that you are given as an attacker, although the defenders are pretty much tasked with stopping the attackers from achieving whatever objective it is they have to do every time. Free-for-all arena modes are a welcome distraction for those just wanting some melee carnage. Both games suffer from lack of team communication tools. With no in-game voiceover IP, Chivalry slips slightly in comparison to War of the Roses since it also does not feature a squad system, and neither game officially supports clan play at this point. Thanks to the strength of the team objective mode, however, I'm giving the edge to Chivalry when it comes to multiplayer depth. War of the Roses will set you back $29.99 or your regional equivalent. It also offers the House of York Special Edition, which comes complete with some bonus unlocks and the official game soundtrack. A four-pack of the game is also available for $89.97, which saves you $7.50 per copy of the game. The first free content update has already been announced, which includes seven new weapons, a new armor set, and a new helmet. A winter content update will include two new game modes, two new maps, and a snow weather mechanic. It seems players will also be able to skip the unlock process by paying real money to access these new weapons. Chivalry is set to cost $24.99 or your regional equivalent, with a 4-pack available for $74.99, bringing each copy down to $18.75. Since the game only released today, there are no current announcements for new content. There are murmurings of new weapons and game modes coming after the game's release, but no details have been given as of yet. When it comes down to value for money, it's a very difficult call to make. Both games are multiplayer only, and single-player content is restricted purely to training modes, though it is possible to play Chivalry versus bots by creating a server. It should also be pointed out that War of the Roses has a head start and has been out for a couple of weeks longer than Chivalry, meaning we don't necessarily know the future plans of Torn Banner when it comes to new content for Chivalry later down the line. The idea that you can pay real money to skip the unlock process is something I don't particularly like in War of the Roses, and I feel that while it doesn't unbalance the game, since every item can be unlocked with in-game currency individually and it doesn't take too long to do so, it is unnecessary money-grubbing that leaves a sour taste in the mouth. The commitment to free content from Fat Shark, however, is heartening, particularly when their previous title, Lead and Gold, did not receive the support it desperately needed post-launch in order to succeed. Both games are priced in a similar mid-range bracket, and both may find themselves struggling against free-to-play titles, though they do offer a very different experience, which you currently cannot find in the free-to-play space. Both games offer a fair degree of longevity with their respective unlock systems. Overall, it's really too hard to call this one. Both games offer reasonable value for money if you want a medieval combat game, though both are trumped by the sheer amount of content and modding support available for Mountain Blade Warband. Neither side gets the edge in value for money. So to recap, 
Chivalry started off strong with solid melee attacks, but War of the Roses took back from a distance with its excellent ranged combat mechanics. Fatshark's latest continued to press the advantage, overcoming Torn Banner's first commercial title in the realism stakes with amazing attention to detail. In a rather ironic twist, Chivalry, however, refuses to play fair and abandons honor in the brutality category, taking heads left and right. Unfortunately, however, Chivalry's dirty tricks are not enough to prevent War of the Roses from gaining the edge in both presentation and customization. It's not all about the shinies, though. Chivalry is just a deeper game in general with its outstanding team objective and FFA modes. Both games offer reasonable value for money, which leaves us with the final question. Which is deadliest? It's a very tough call. Both games do a great deal of things right and provide satisfying medieval gameplay. If I'm completely honest, though, having played a great deal of either game, I have to say that in its current state, I feel I enjoy Chivalry just a bit more. It's a combination of two things that I really like. The melee system has much more weight behind it, and it's hard to argue with a game that forces you right into the face of your opponent when you're going to focus on melee combat. The team objective mode is excellent and reminiscent of Wolfenstein enemy territory, with a little bit of Battlefield Rush mode thrown in for good measure. War of the Roses is clearly the more polished game with greater combat variety, and the inclusion of mounted units is a significant pro. Plus, who knows where it'll go with additional content updates and game modes being added. But, at this moment right now, I feel that Chivalry is the more enjoyable game, and as such, I have to declare Chivalry the deadliest war. My name is Total Biscuit. Thank you for watching. You can check out both games on popular distribution platforms, including Steam and Gamersgate. If you enjoyed this different piece of content, then feel free to give it a thumbs up below. If you didn't, then give it a thumbs down. That is indeed what the system is there for. Thank you once again for watching, and I will see you next time.